All right, I'd like to th just thank the uh, moderators for the invitation to come talk. Um, I don't have any disclosures that are relevant to this talk. I just, I want to sort of talk through, organize the talk and sort of the decision-making processes we have to go through when we see these patients. And so typically, for me, I get a call from the transfer center, right, or a patient shows up in the OR, or ER rather, with um, severe chest pain or abdominal pain, nausea, and then an imaging study, most often a CAT scan, that suggests gastric volvulus, and then you get a call about our urgent transfer or urgent consult. So the questions I think we probably need to answer is one, is this truly emergent or is this an urgent situation? Because we may manage it differently in terms of resuscitating the patient, taking some time before we go to surgery. Also, the type of volvulus you're looking at because it may affect how you fix the problem. And then some of the technical considerations about how you're gonna fix this in terms of do we do a laparoscopic or open approach, fundoplication or gastropexy, or, and then mesh reinforcement at the hiatus we'll touch on at the end. So from symptom standpoint, the classic presentation for an acute gastric volvulus, right, is severe epigastric pain, inability to vomit, and an inability to pass an NG tube. So that's the situation where I think you need to make sure, be really concerned about acute gastric ischemia, and that really typically represents a surgical emergency. You also want to look for signs of sepsis and evidence of perforation, okay? And the, on the more common presentation is you get a very panicked phone call, but then you go to see the patient and they do have pain, they haven't been eating well, maybe they're throwing up, but if you put an NG tube down and decompress the stomach, their symptoms often go away and they do much better. That's really more of an urgent situation where you can resuscitate the patient, take some time, and then do the operation in a, little, in a more controlled setting, particularly if it's at night. So looking at the types of volvulus, I th on the right, that's a me mesenterocoaxial volvulus. This is where the stomach actually rotates along the short axis. The pylorus often ends above the GE junction. Typically happens in the abdomen without a hernia, and it produces gastric outlet obstruction, and patients throw up a lot. The organoaxial volvulus is the one I think we're all more familiar with and see more often. This is along the long axis of the stomach. The stomach rotates. You can see nicely from this diagram how this creates an obstruction both at the GE junction and the pylorus, resulting in a um, closed loop of gastric obstruction. And this is where you see perforations and um, necrotic stomach, so you need to be aware of that. And when we fix these, we're gonna look at, especially in gastropexy, how you do that may depend on which type of volvulus you're looking at. From preoperative evaluation standpoint, for most of my forego procedures, I like uh, upper GIs to evaluate hernias. In this particular case, I think CT is probably better because it, um, you can see around evidence of perforation if there's fluid in the sac, a lot of edema, things like that. So it probably in this case gives you more information. Endoscopy, sometimes we do it to assess uh, gastric perfusion preoperatively. More often I use it in the OR uh, at the time of surgery. And I typically forgo manometry in these cases because the patients don't feel well, it's hard to get a good, uh, a good study. And I, I think that our decisions about fund application and PEXI tend to do more with the, the uh, status of the stomach rather than the motility of the esophagus. So the technical, the technical steps of surgical management for this are the same as they are for an elective case, although it can be all more difficult. The edema in the stomach and the obstruction can make it difficult to reduce the hernia. Also, the sac can be very attenuated and swollen. So you really have to just be patient, take your time, but you go through the same steps that we would go through in an elective operation and get that cruise closed and then anchor the stomach down uh, one way or the other with a fundoplication or a pexy. Uh, there's, in my experience, okay, I think that this can be done laparoscopically, it can be done safely. There's a, several small case series that look at this and have sort of come to that conclusion. There's been a couple more population-based studies done in the last few years that tried to look at this. This is one from the group at the University of Nebraska using the UHC database. About a quarter of their patients, the cases here were uh, urgent and emergent cases. These data come from largely academic centers, and about 70% of those cases were done laparoscopically. The laparoscopic approach was associated with lower morbidity and mortality, but this is a univariate analysis, and so there's probably some uh, bias in terms of how the, why the patients were done open in the other group. 
Another study, this one's from the Medical College of Wisconsin, looking at the nation nationwide inpatient sample, so a more generalized sampling, shows a much lower laparoscopic utilization rate, only half of parasophageals overall, and a quarter of the um, urgent and emergent. But here, they did, were able to do a multivariate analysis that shows that um, laparoscopy was independently associated with better outcomes and sort of drives that idea that we want to be thinking about minimally invasive surgery for this. Um, when we're doing this, we have to decide, are we going to fix the stomach and the abdomen using a gastrophexy, or can we do a fundoplication? And like I said before, I, I base this on um, the condition of the stomach. If the stomach's very swollen and boggy, it seems in bad shape, then I don't tend to do fundoplications as much. If the patients are very old, very sick, and high risk, gastropexy is also a faster and better option uh, in those patients. If you're going to do a gastropexy, you can do... Um, uh, gastrostomy tubes for this or suture applications to the anteroabdominal wall. I think it's important to have multiple points of fixation. These do tend to come apart. I like to use gastrostomy tubes, at least one, because then you can have it for feeding or gastric decompression if they have delayed emptying after surgery. And then in some very, very high risk patients, it's also acceptable to do a, uh, a gastropexy alone without fixing the hernia. This diagram I put up for a couple reasons. One, this is from a study that uh, the University of Washington published looking at their series of a small number of patients who were very sick who had only gastropexies, not repairs. They sutured points, is this pointer work? No. All along the greater curve. And this star is where they placed their gastrostomy tube. And I think the position here is important because if you look at the, uh, look at the picture on the left, if you put the, the G-tube there, it's going to prevent recurrence of either type of this volvulus. If you put them too high, they can, oftentimes patients can get a recurrent hernia and a recurrent volvulus. Finally, I just want to weigh in on mesh. This is the trial that was a multicenter trial of biologic mesh. What this taught us was that early recurrences tend to happen because of coral breakdown. And so you see, if you put the mesh there, that the early recurrence rate goes down in the... Um, Long term, though, the aperture dilates up, hernias come back, so it doesn't really help us so much there. So my sort of application of mesh tends to be, if it's very swollen, the cruise is tight, under a lot of tension, and I'm worried that it's going to recur soon, I'll put a, a, a biosynthetic or a bioabsorbable mesh there. So just to summarize, I think overall now, we should favor laparoscopic approach to these problems unless we're forced uh, by the patient's condition or medical state to do it open. We should consider fund applications as our primary mode of uh, gastric fixation, but gast uh, gastropexies are perfectly acceptable. And you can consider gastropexy alone in really difficult situations in frail patients. And I would consider the use of uh, mesh in patients with tenuous curl closures. Thank you. Thank you.